school lesson this morning. Appreciate you being here in the house of the Lord this morning. And uh, we'll continue to go on in the Word of God today. Romans chapter 8, if you want to turn with me there. You know, oftentimes a preacher says, uh, I'll try not to be too long or bore you or, you know, I think about that. You know, I, I don't know if you get convicted, but I do. Whenever I begin to have the mentality that I can't sit still for 45 minutes and listen to God's word, and yet we can go home and sit for, for hours looking at our phone and or watching a movie, or doing something that we, the flesh, wants to do. <clears throat> we'll sit at a table and yak about nothing for hours, but when it comes to God's Word, we, we, sometimes we feel like 30 minutes is like, oh my goodness, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. God help me not to be that way when it comes to the Word of the Lord. Amen. So uh, I know that my personally... I. No doubt, I admit, I may be boring sometimes, but God's word is not boring. Amen. And if you'll just bear with me, you know, uh, maybe the next time I won't be so boring. I don't know. But praise God. I'm going to keep chipping away at it. How about you? Praise the Lord. You ever read your Bible and just didn't get nothing out of it? Sure we have. Yeah. Sure we have. We don't want to admit that, but we do. We re we've read our Bible and, <coughs> excuse me, you might have read it for 30 minutes and think, what did I just read? We've all been there. But we have also all been there whenever we picked up the Word of God and we began to read again and it just uh, shined like the sun in our mind. Amen. So that's the reason we need to keep going on, keep worshiping God, keep praising God for his goodness and help in our life. <coughs> Excuse me for my cough this morning. Yes, sir. That's right. Amen. Romans 8, verse 28. The Bible says, And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to whom uh, to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called them he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? I love that scripture, don't you? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine? <coughs> or nakedness, or, spur, or peril, or sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither life, that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus, Christ Jesus our Lord. What I want to talk to you about this morning is, is reminding you that God 
is God, that God is sovereign, that he is, uh, we have testified many times that we thank God that he is still on the throne, meaning that he is still in authority. He still has the say. And uh, I think the world, the church, needs to be reminded this morning that God still has the say. God still is in control. Amen. I know that things can look uh, bleak. They can look like, you know, the Lord, where are you, where are you at? Uh, we've all felt that in our own life. Lord, where are you at in my life? Uh, but God is sovereign. Uh, we see uh, the sovereignty of God. It's our only hope. It is. God's sovereignty is your only hope. It's my only hope. It's this world's only hope. Whenever re we recognize and we worship God as, as uh, the Almighty and God as being supreme, God as being the, uh, you know, the one that dictates, the one that controls our life. There's not a one of us in here this morning that controls our own life as far as our physical bodies. We may think we do. We may can get to a place where we feel like we do. But, but your breath, your living is in the hands of God. You cannot, uh, you cannot... <laughs> You can't just say, well, I'm going to be living next year. We don't know that, do we? That is in God's hands. God is in authority. He's in authority in our life, and I think that we would, would live a, a better and have a better relationship with the Lord if we lived more in such a way that, that God has the say in our life and that we seek the will of God in all aspects of our life. And I hope we're doing that as, as Christians, that we're trying to practice that, uh, that being in God's will in all of our life. And uh, we know that a relationship with God, uh, being in connection with God, having a love for God, is the greatest thing mankind can ever do. It always will be. When man or woman tries to live for the gods of this world and, and for the things of this world and for themselves, it winds up in disaster, doesn't it? But the man or woman that sets out on the course to seek God and to find God in his or her life and to plant his feet on the rock, Jesus Christ. And to plant his feet in the church. To plant his ways in the house of God and God's ways. Uh, it's always been the best. We look at the, the many stories that have been told in our Bibles. The many examples that God has given us in, our, in, his, in this Bible. That we read of men that has had faith in God. That has faith in God no matter what God told them. They walked in God's presence and God seen them through. And God will see you and I through in our life. But, but I want us to remember that God is in authority. God is sovereign. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to go to a little story here I found It's a story of a scene in the Civil War. The story follows the rise and fall of the Civil War hero, General Thomas Jackson. And the story doesn't hide its, uh, Mr. Jackson's Christianity. Throughout the story, Jackson's dependence on God is shown, but never more strikingly that in the early morning hours of July 21st, 1861, prior to the first battle of Bull Run, as the gleamers of dawn break forth, Jackson calls out on God asking for his will to be done. Almost immediately things 
Don't go well for the outnumbered Confederates. Union forces quickly overpowered them. The Confederate, Confederate line broke. All-out retreat ensued. Several Confederate brigades ran to the next line of reinforcement, which was held by Jackson's brigade. Morale was all but gone as retreating soldiers swarmed Jackson's position. With the Union Army on their heels, but then someone yelled over the din of battle to the men telling them to look at Jackson. At the moment, General Jackson was sitting erect in his saddle with cannon fire exploding all around him. His left hand was wounded by a musket ball. Nevertheless, he didn't flinch. Word spread among the men said, look at Jackson standing like a stone wall. They said, Stonewall Jackson, as he would be known from that day, paced his horse back and forth across the hazardous front line, shouting orders to charge as the musket balls pierced the air. His stunning bravery stirred the men of valor, and they turned to face advancing Union forces with new resolve. At the end of the day, General Jackson returned to the battle to survey the losses. 111 Confederates died, 373 missing. Weary and sad, Jackson knelt beside a dead soldier. It was then that one of his captains asked him, General, how is it that you can keep so serene and stay so utterly insensible with a storm of shells and bullets about your head? Jackson replied, Captain Smith, my religious belief teaches me to feel as safe in battle as in bed. God has fixed the time for my death. I do not concern myself with that, but to be always ready whenever it may overtake me. If this is the way that all men lived, then all men would be equally brave. Stonewall Jackson was declaring his belief that God ruled over the details of his life. Do we believe that today? That God rules over the details of our life? Is he concerned with your sickness? Is he concerned with your placement of job? Is he concerned with your finances? Is he concerned with your life? Is he concerned with your family? Is he concerned with what you do on a day-to-day -day basis? What's the answer to that? It should be a shouting yes. God is concerned. But I think that all of us in here this morning would have to admit that there's a lot of times that we forget that, don't we? We don't do that on purpose. We don't purposely forget that God is in concern that he is concerned about our, our, our little small things in our life. But it's our adversary, the devil, that gets our minds sidetracked. And we lose focus. And we begin not to think that God is around, that God is not concerned. But God is concerned this morning. And God is still on the throne. And if we would live a life like that, I know that we can't be careless and we can't live an unwise life. We have to seek wisdom and we have to try to make good decisions to the best of our ability according to God's word. But that said, we can't live in fear every day. But the best thing that we can do is be ready for whenever God calls us home, right? Amen. So God is sovereign. God is in control of the United States. God is in control of its well-being. And I know that, that the world has always suffered the wrath of God. The children of Israel in the Old Testament suffered the wrath of God. Even when they thought that they would not. No doubt there were times whenever they felt like they were invincible and they were, they were God's children. So it didn't matter what they'd done that God would give them a free pass. But it didn't happen, did it? God doesn't give us a free pass. Every man will stand before God one day. 
Every man will give an account to God. Every man or woman, boy or girl, we will give an account for our sins, won't we? we we'll work that way. Uh, we, can, we can try to hide. We can try to cover the wool. We can, we can come in, in sheep's clothing and all kinds of ways. We can disguise ourselves, but God knows who we really are. He really does. God is in authority this morning. God is in authority. Praise God. Amen. I'm glad that I can say this morning that God is in control. Amen. Whenever we get caught up in fear, whenever we get caught up in anxiety, God is in control. And I, I feel that the line that is drawn between us and God it's just as his word said, it said, your sin has separated you from me. Our sin is what separates us from God. God is in control. Do we want him to be in control this morning? I hope we do. Praise the Lord. The scripture we started out reading, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. And are called according to his purpose. I want to read a few scriptures this morning on the, uh, with the thought process of God being in control. God being in, uh, having sovereignty in our lives. John chapter 15 and verse 16 says, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And ordain you that you should go and bring forth fruit. That your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Amen. We need to apply those promises to our life. Moving on to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 7. We'll also read verse 8. Deuteronomy 7, 7 and 8. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of a bondman, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Look at this question that God is asking his children. But because the Lord has loved you. When we fast forward to the New Testament, very familiar popular scripture, John 3 and 16, starts out with, For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. Paraphrasing the rest of it. That you and I could have life. And that we could have it everlasting. That we wouldn't have to. Amen. Fret and fear every day. For God so loved you and I. God is still in control. This very day. This very Sunday morning. Is there some in here on the sound of my voice. That has given up. Has given up on God? I don't know, but I want to encourage you to remember that God is still in control. Proverbs 16 and verse 9 says, A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. The Lord can direct our day-to-day -day steps. Well, how does God do that? I know you probably already got your Monday scheduled out, don't you? Most of us do, don't we? We know that we have a job to attend. We know that certain things that we think that we're going to go do. And uh, we have a plan. I know we should keep our commitments. If we have a job, we should show up and be there. We should be punctual. Uh, we should be, you know, good, faithful stewards to, you know, what we have applied ourselves, you know, to our job to make our living and 
occupy, you know, well, we all know that we have to do those things. But somewhere, we need God's direction. You know, maybe if we would step back and take a bigger look at the big picture, and we would get out of just the moment, and, and begin to seek God for His will in our entire life, in our future, in our weeks to come, in our months to come, and what our life is to become. Amen. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people don't like to think about the future. But I'll tell you what, that's the reason you and I are here this morning. We're thinking about the future, aren't we? What do I mean by that? I mean by you're thinking about the future as in you want to make it to heaven. You want to worship God. You want to be pleasing to God. Because one day you want to make heaven your home. That's the future. Amen. And the only way that you and I are going to make heaven our home, I believe, is to recognize fully that God is sovereign. How many men and women in the Bible that, that tried to live their life without the Lord? What happened? We know the answer to that, don't we? It didn't end very well. It did not. You know, God was so merciful. I think of the story of the king that went to Elijah that had all the bulls. And uh, Elijah wouldn't hardly speak to him. Sent his servant out to tell him, said, go dip in the river of Jordan seven times. That king must have been hurting so bad, pretty, pretty bad physically. He didn't want to do that, did he? How would that man come out and just send his servant? I'm the king. I'm the captain of the Lord's army. Why would he just send a servant out to talk to me? He began to give himself a pity party. Finally, he was talked into going, going on down and just trying it. You know what? Life will bring us to that place sometimes, won't it? God can bring us to such a miserable place, even though we may not even believe in God. It doesn't look to me in Scripture that that man was a believer, does it? He was just trying to get relief from his body. And he had heard about a man of God, and he, I, I can't get rid of this no other way, so I'm going to try this man of God, see what happens. He went and tried it, and God healed him, even through his ignorance. How many is glad this morning that God helps you through your ignorance? I am. I am so glad that God helps me through my ignorance, through my stupidity. Amen. Uh, you know, we've all been there. I know we have. Uh, but God is good this morning. And that God, that's how merciful God is. He helps us through our rebellion, through our whatever you may want to call it. I'm just glad that God helps us this morning. And we need to be reminded that God is still in control. Whenever you see things happening all around you, whenever you see bad things happen as a nation, remember God is still in control of these th this thing. God is still in control of this world. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 16 and verse 9 says, A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. Then we'll move to Isaiah chapter 40 in verse 26. The scripture says, Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who hath created these things that bringeth out their host by number. He calleth them all by names by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, not one faileth. Not one faileth. Note that in the scripture. Not one faileth. Remember this, show yourselves men, bring it again to mind, O ye transgressors. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God, there is none like me. 
declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times, the things that were not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand. I will do all my pleasure. Calling a ravenous bird, ravenous bird from the east, the man that executeth my counsel from a far country. Yea, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass, and I have purposed it. I will also do it. Thank God for his promises this morning. Thank God as young people that God can direct your life if we give him our thoughts and give him our mind wherever position that we may be in. God wants our heart. God wants our submission. He wants us to submit to him. And let's be faithful in doing that. You remember where the scripture said, I don't have it pulled up this morning, but said the Lord knows the very number of the hairs upon our head. That's a lot of numbers. I don't think there's anyone that could probably count the number of hairs in your head. Nearly impossible. It's about like going out to the side of the ocean and trying to count sand particles. Nearly never ending. Thank God that God has a purpose for every one of us. God has a purpose. We need to trust God. We've seen a, or we've heard the phrase in the past several years. Said, praise God in the hallways until God opens the door. Praise God in the moment of your life. In the moment of your confusion, in the moment of your insecurity, in the moment of your trial, praise God and lift up the name of the Lord because God is still in control. That's the only thing that I know to how to have peace this morning. How about you? Are you in agreements with me this morning? I hope you are and realize that God is the answer to mine and your life. Amen. Now I know we can get hung up on, you know, I, I want to add in here, we have to be faithful stewards. We have to be good stewards. We read that of the parable that Jesus taught in the book, uh, you know, in the New Testament. We can't just sit and think that God is going to do everything for us. We have to be proactive. I've been guilty of it too before. How many things has God laid upon our hearts? How many things has God pointed out in our lives and said, look, see, you need to do this. But yet we ignore it and we think we'll save it for another day. And we've, we end up getting consumed with our personal life. And we put the things of God off. And then a week rolls by. Then two weeks roll by. And we're still in the same place. We're always procrastinating. We're always putting off the thing. I hate to say that. But that's how people are. Amen. And we must not let it happen to us. If we have fallen, have fallen into that trap. We must pull ourselves together. And be proactive to the things of God. We can always think well somebody else will do it. But I want to tell you what, uh, that somebody else needs to be you this morning. Amen. God spoke to me many, many years ago. Uh, we had started a little children's bus ministry here. And uh, I, I was thinking the whole time of someone else that, that I thought would be a good bus driver, that would be good for, for doing that. I didn't have any position in the church at the time. Uh, I, I just brought my family to church and I was in church. That was it. You know, I mean, I helped do things around the church. But anyway, my mindset was, I think so-and-so ought to do that. And I remember the Lord speaking to me. I said, what about you? You can't do that? And so guess what? Tommy ended up doing that. 
It's easy to think that somebody else is going to do it. Come on now. Let's, rem let's remember this. Let's be proactive in the things of God. We want to realize that God is sovereign, that God is in authority. But we have to be proactive. We cannot leave that out. We have to attend the things of God. You know, who, who likes pie? Who likes cake? Everybody does, right? Uh, my mother, she was showing me an old book of my grandmother's recipes last night. My grandmother was a diabetic. Full-fledged diabetic. Took insulin shots all the days of my life that I ever known her. But that lady loved sweets. She lived to be a good old age. But my, I looked through that recipe book and I said, my goodness, mama, look at all the pie recipes she has. I mean, cake after cake, and then every once in a while there would be a there would be a, you know, a main dish. But <laughs> in that book, most of them recipes were pineapple cakes and chocolate pies and different kind of cookies and all pear, pear cakes and all these kind of cakes. And stuff. Oh, my goodness. Ma so loved her sweets, even though she is a diabetic. But my point is, everybody likes the cake, don't we? What if you sit down and eat a meal and all you ever eat was cake? I, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. We can go home this evening and make a good old fresh chocolate pie with a, you're going to get hungry now. I like that. We, I like that. We call it calf slobber on top. Toasted golden brown on top. We could make a fresh hot chocolate pie. There wouldn't be a slice left, would it? Everybody would eat that stuff. You know, I got a niece. She's real picky about her eating. I mean, picky ain't the word for this girl. She's, I mean, she's beyond picky. And she was that way from a baby. But I got to noticing something. Last several times I seen her, I'd say, you like candy bars? Yeah. So what candy bar do you not like? She couldn't think of one. I said, you like pies? Yeah. You like, sweet, you like cookies? Oh, yeah. There was not a hardly a sweet that she could think of that she didn't like. But when it comes to the main course, whoo, we didn't want that, we didn't want that, we didn't want that, we didn't want. We live like that sometimes. We all, it's easy to say, yeah, give me a slice of the pie. Now here's my point. Yeah, give me a slice of what's easy. Is, is that all I have to do? Okay, yeah, give that to me. But you know what? You need a little salad every now and then. You need a little something that's good for you. How many of you know that it's good for you to sweat a little bit every now and then? It's good for us to exercise. Does our body want that? It does, it does. No, especially in this heat right now that we're having. We get out there for a few minutes, and that sweat goes to dripping. We're like, give me back that air condition. But also, if we stop and think about it, that's what we need. If we always took the easy road, if we always took the easy things, and we always, you know, shoved the good things that were for us, and we, we find, you know, uh, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is this morning, stop a minute. Are, are you just eating pie? <coughs> are you just eating the sweets? Are you just eating the candy? I think that God wants us to apply ourselves a little bit more. God is sovereign. God is in control. But at the same time, we need to be proactive. 
You see, that, that is a connection there. That is the way that God is able to be in control of our life whenever He has, has us working toward His will in our life, whenever we are seeking out the, the right things to do and you know the right things to say, and we're looking at the Word of God, and we're trying to conduct ourselves right. I know we have to tend to business. And it isn't always fun. But we can be faithful to the God that is in control. Amen. Praise the Lord. We'll, we'll end this here. If, if we could, let's all stand. God, I thank you so much for your presence this morning, for your help in this service, Lord. I thank you that you are still on the throne, that you are in control. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, for being so mindful of our lives, so mindful of our health conditions, so mindful of our finances, and mindful of everything in our life. I pray, Lord, that we would give ourselves completely and fully over to you and let you have control. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would draw us closer to you, Lord, and help us in Jesus' name, Lord. We thank you for it. Amen. Amen. I want to give you a moment to come and, and uh, talk to the Lord at these altars here for a few moments.